Hey guys, it's Tourniquet here. Just giving you guys a um, little tank guide here for the just to go over the state of tanking in the newest expansion. What I wanted to do is rather than just give you the skills, attributes, champion points, and gear being used, I wanted to kind of go through the reasoning why. That way it might kind of give you guys ideas going forward on how to make your own builds and kind of understand the method to the madness and what I'm trying to accomplish here. Uh, most of my stuff comes directly from, uh, I'd say I'm, half my build is from Delta's build and the other half is from a thread on the Dragonite Theory Crafting and Tamming Roll forums. I don't have the guy's name. Uh, I believe it's called uh, the Blockade. That's the name of the thread. But anyway, I just wanted to get right into it. I, there's a lot of information to cover and I really want to kind of want to fly through it just so you guys can go back and relook at the parts you want to and that way the guide doesn't take forever to get through. The first thing I want to go over is my attributes. I originally when the patch hit I had less magicka, more health, and roughly the same amount of stamina. I decided to go a little bit more magicka just because I couldn't cast enough abilities back to back, mainly using extended chains. chains. That got really annoying, so I decided to put a little bit more into Magicka and take out of health. The reason is, don't get me wrong, health is great to have, more is always better, but there comes a point where you start to kind of gimp yourself in other areas. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to do, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, without structured entropy, I wanted to have, with food buffs, right around 33,000, which I did here. And part of that has to do with enchants, but I'll get, I'll get to that later. Uh, so my health is right pretty much where I want it. The sweet spot to me is right around here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going under 30,000, and I wouldn't recommend going over 34 or 35. That means you're probably lacking in another area. But that depends on your play style, so that's up for you to decide. Going, f uh, going on, I picked the Lord for health. Uh, as you can see, I still have a food buff on. Uh, I'm actually going to refresh this now so I can uh, show a little bit later what I have going on. And that's it for stats. As you can see, I've got 15,000 Magic Cub, almost 34,000 health, 33,005, and a decent amount of stamina. Having this amount of stamina also helps too, because for the Planar Inhibitor, which is the third fight in the White Gold Tower, that requires everyone to have a decent DPS build due to the mechanics of the fight. I won't go into detail, that's for a different thread. But the bottom line is, having a little bit extra stamina will help me, when I use my two-hander or my bow, do a little bit extra damage on that fight, which never hurts anything. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to go over the champion points. I'll start right here. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. I went with at least 70, well first of all before I even get started, I have 302 champion points as of right now. So I thought this is a good time to do this video because I'm not one of these players that has 500 points and I'm also not really low on the scale where I have only 200. I think 300 is a good amount where a lot of people are close to that so they can easily kind of relate to my allocation where it is right now and get similar results. I put 75 points in the 76, but you want at least 75 in the block expertise. Here's why. You get this nice little passive here that increases your equipped uh, heavy armor shield uh, by, or woodworking shield rather, by 75%, which is really, really nice. I used to have points in resistance because according to the combat logs, PvE mobs crit. I was informed that that's inaccurate, they do not crit, so having points in here purely for PvE purposes is a waste, it only benefits you in PvP. Uh, Elemental Defender, I put at least 10 points here because for any class or for any rule, this really is beneficial. This can mean the difference between life and death since a lot of the damage we do face in the four mans in, in trials is in the form of elemental damage. So anyone can really benefit from at least 10 points, the more the better. So as time goes on, I'm going to bump this up to probably 20, at least 30. Uh, the last part of it, I put everything else in the heavy armor focus. With 15 points, I can pretty much, and I'll show you this in a bit, I can reach the um, armor cap, which puts me at 50% mitigation. I'm really close to it. 
But that's including um, hardened armor also, though. So that's a little caveat, but I'll, I'll get to that later. Moving right along here, because we do not have a big magic pool, I put a lot of points into the Magician with about, about a 2 to 1 ratio into Warlord. The, these are the only two trees that I put right here, two uh, abilities that I put points into. I put 30 into Arcanist for faster regen because our pool is smaller for Magicka, and I didn't put any in Mooncalf. I might add maybe 5 or 10 over time. The reason is because we are going to be blocking a lot of the time in this new patch. Not much has changed as far as playstyle. You really still have to block a lot of the time, and you have to plan out your tanking build for it. There was talk about trying to rely on magicka based shields, and your healers are going to hate you for it. Not only is it not going to work, your damage is going to be so spiky that you're probably going to end up going from 100% once the shield wears off down to like 10% or dying. It's just not a good idea. If you want to be a Dragonite tank, you're going to have to pay the price and put the points where you need to and to reduce block cost and try to offset the costs of stamina. The reason, and kind of, I kind of went off on a tangent there, the reason I didn't put any here is because you're blocking most of the time and you don't get any benefit while you're blocking your region. Uh, I did not put any points here simply because there's more important things to have, like I already mentioned. Here, I put 45 points into Blessed, which will increase my healing from Dragon's Blood. And I'm not going to put any more than 20 points, probably, into Elfborn. I think that's a good amount to keep for now. And this is kind of where I want it to be for this tree right here. That gives me a nice little healing boost. I skipped this entirely. Going forward, I really do like this ability, but this is kind of a ability that's nice to have later down the line. It's not urgent for you to be doing DPS as a tank or getting 30 points to access this. However, it is really nice. I put the other points into Mighty. This kind of goes back to what I was saying before with uh, the need for having DPS for that fight. Because I already have stamina, I went the stamina route with weapons, so I decided to put some points in here, and this also helps me with my sword and shield over time in a fight. That's pretty much it for the champion points. Let me get right to gear here. Uh, let's see. Okay, as you can see, I the only really new thing I have is I was lucky enough quickly on to get the Engine Guardian set V16. I have infused on the shoulders and I have medium armor reinforced. All my gear is going to be enchanced, maximum enchantments, except for the jewelry. The other good set, which I'll explain later, is the Blood Spawn set, simply because you have the ultimate regen. And this is really important, and again, I'll talk about this during the skills portion, and getting back your resources. So the faster you can get your ulti up, the more you can use it as a regen source. But I still think Engine Guardian is superior. I start, I'm sticking with his spark for now. I'm in the process of getting together an Armor Master set. The trade-off with that is with Armor Master, you need to, in order to get the 5% health bonus, which of course is nice, you need to have two to two different armor, well, an armor ability on each of your active bars. So basically, two armor abilities, one on your main bar and one on your off. That way, when you toggle bars, you still stay with the bonus. It can be any armor ability. I haven't really decided between the heavy armor one and the light armor one. Both are, have their place. The heavy armor is a lot more expensive and costs stamina, so I won't be using it that much. But the one that I really do plan on using is the evasion skill. What this will do is this allows you to essentially get the same benefit of his spark with the 20% dodge. And when you use an armor ability, you do get a 10 second huge armor buff. But I am going to try to get as close to 33,000 as possible using reinforced armor. Um, that way, I'm never really far off from the cap, and I don't have to uh, rely on hardened armor on my skill bar. Uh, as you can see with this current setup, uh, I still have footmen. The only reason I still have it, yes, it sucks for the five-piece bonus to have to run V13 uh, armor and 14 accessories, but 
with the new gear that's coming out, there's simply no better option in my opinion. The endurance set really doesn't offer anything just to have something that's V16. You're better off sticking with Footman than deciding between his spark or the Armor Master. His, and I'm having no problems, by the way, tanking any of the vet dungeon bosses with, uh, with V14 and V13 gear. It's not an issue. As long as my block is up, I don't take much damage at all. And as you can see, without my hardened armor, I'm at 27 resistance in the upper right hand corner. With it, I'm at very close to cap, as you can see right, you can't really see it. Underneath the upper left hand corner of my screen, there's a white percentage bar, 49.1 and 48.7. That's an add-on called mitigation percent, which I really like. It tells you how close you are to the 50% cap. There is some discussion, I can't confirm if it's true or not, that uh, in PvP, players that use armor penetration will change your armor values, so you actually need to go above the cap to keep it capped. And some people are saying that PvE endgame bosses will do the same thing. The hard part is, there's no way to account for it since it's not e even confirmed, so you're just pretty much going by guesswork. You want, you don't know how much your PvP opponent has, and Xenomax, of course, won't give you any, inf any information about what the enemy bosses are doing as far as that goes. So that's kind of, nothing is really confirmed on that front, it's just an idea to have. Uh, keep in the back of your head. Another thing is, there's no harm in going above the cap. The reason is, is as you take damage during the course of a run, you will no longer be able to reach 50%. So anything you can do to go even a thousand to two or three thousand points over gives you a buffer. So you can last at 50% as your armor gets damaged throughout the course of a fight. That's pretty much all I really have for armor. I'm going to continue with the footman until something better comes out. That way I get a five piece. Since there's no other set that will allow for a five piece using jewelry and I will be switching over to the armor master to give it a shot but I know that his spark is perfectly fine for my style of play where I don't have to rely or have to get the armor master the next thing I want to do is go over skills Let's give me one sec okay um, I rearranged my bar instead of having a single target and a AOE bar like I used to have. I arrange them differently. I have an offensive bar and I have a defensive slash buff bar. Because these are really only buffs, I don't spend a lot of time here. I spend most of my time here. Uh, so starting off with this bar, obviously pure armor. Uh, use extended change. If you're at a boss fight, you can swap this out if it's not needed. Uh, same thing with burning talons, but I keep these pretty much on here 90% uh, of the time. This is really important. This second slot I use as a flex slot. I have defensive stance simply because A, it reduces damage and it reduces the cost. I have this on both bars. I always keep it here. This way, even if I don't have it on my first bar, I can swap it here, activate it to reflect a projectile, and just swap back. I do this a lot. Uh, but I keep them both here. Otherwise, I will switch, depending on what I'm doing, to either Stone Giant or Fossilize. If I'm dealing with an encounter that has a healer that I just want to take out of the equation and kill the other mobs first. The other thing I might use is I use Heroic Slash. This will help me, as I said earlier, gain ultimate and put the physical damage debuff on the boss. Uh, again, you don't have to do this. You can also, if you want more health, you can go with the uh, Structured Entropy. However, that's currently bugged right now. I don't know the exact details of the bug. It has to do with potions being put on cooldown, so you want to hold off. But you can also use this. Um, but the main, uh, the main abilities I use are right here. As far as the buff bar, I honestly have my range taunt. I don't usually use this that often, but I always keep it available. Uh, hardened armor, self-explanatory. Uh, igneous shield I want to bring up. You want to have at least one ability from the earth and heart tree up at all times. So whether it's eruption or 
igneous shield. The reason is the passive. The passives, they have, well, let's see here. It'll allow you to gain back stamina, uh, even when you're blocking. That's what's nice about this. And another thing I want to bring up at this time is Battle Roar. This will, anytime you do any ultimate, you will regain all three of your resources up to 70% of your ultimate's cost. I use this a lot, kind of as an emergency move later on in the fight. If I'm running low on uh, resources, I will usually start off. I know I have standard of might in there, but I normally begin the fight with Ferocious Leap. The reason is it gives you a nice little uh, damage shield and it's very, very cheap. So if you run into a jam and your healer is not throwing shards and you didn't manage yourself that good, your resources, you can usually get this up pretty quick, pop it, and it gets you out of a jam. At least buys you time. The other one I really like to use is Magma Shell. The reason is you can pop this and literally not block for 10 seconds. And you can pop, while you're doing that, you can pop your Green's Dragons green dragon's blood and get faster regen so you can pretty much go from close to zero to almost 100 percent simply by popping this not blocking for that 10 seconds because you don't have to and popping this first of course this gives you a boost to your healing then popping this uh you don't need magma shell you can either i like it simply for that reason you can keep this or use warhorn or use standard that's pretty much it for the abilities, and that's pretty much it for the guide. I'm trying, I don't think I missed anything major, and hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, find me in game, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.